Just how good are the new Lakers? LA will have a completely different core of players in their quest for a second straight ring, so this video breaks down the dynamic pieces GM Rob Palenka acquired this offseason, and stay tuned to see whether or not the Lakers can duplicate their utter domination from 2020. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to D-Flow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, this is the place to be. Please subscribe and click the bell so you get notified every time I post content, which is at least twice a week. LeBron James and Anthony Davis carried the purple and gold to a title, with LA's veteran role players fulfilling their assignments by plugging whatever holes the Lakers had throughout their championship run. Now they're primed to run it back. In the front office, Palinka's moves have reflected a certain sense of urgency while also accounting for team needs. Coming up, I'll show you the potential concerns for this Laker team before my early prediction for LA's performance next year. But for now, here's four reasons the 2020-21 Lakers could be an improvement over this past season's title winning team. Arguably the biggest coup in free agency, Montrez Harrell signs with the Lakers for two years and just $19 million. His agent Rich Paul, who also represents LeBron James and Anthony Davis, negotiated the deal between the two sides, so the reigning sixth man of the year is now a member of the Lake Show, but only because the Clippers decided not to have him back. In his first official act as a member of the city's other NBA franchise, Harrell spoke on his move to the Lakers, telling the LA Times, quote unquote, this is a team that wanted me and the team that was really high on me. I'm honored and thankful for that and blessed to be here. I mean, that goes without saying. Apparently not if I'm on the other side. So it is what it is, really. So it turns out that there was more to Harrell's signing than it first seemed when the basketball world was ready to call Harrell a snake for switching teams to an in-market rival. The buzz of the Lakers stealing a valued player from their LA counterpart sadly dissipates when you hear that there wasn't much thievery in the first place. But the Lakers have a hyperactive force in Montrez Harrell, who's capable of getting out in transition as a rim runner and breaking down his matchup off the dribble in the half court with his athleticism and skill. But the most intriguing part of Harrell signing with the reigning champs will be his alignment in pick and roll sequences with LeBron, Schroeder, and of course the meme goat Alex Caruso. Harrell's night and day way more dynamic in comparison to Dwight Howard. He's also in the prime of his career. Dwight Howard was at the end of his career, but whether or not he can provide adequate defense at his undersized for a big man's six foot eight frame, that's going to be the question. More on Montrez coming up. But the acquisition of Schroeder and Harrell bring in 37 and a half points per game from those two players. Instead of securing a potential playmaker that'll need to develop through the draft, the Lakers add someone familiar with the league who can help them win now in their title defense. At six foot one and 172 pounds, the 27 year old Schroeder averaged 18.9 points, four assists and 3.6 rebounds in 69 games as part of Oklahoma City's three guard starting lineup. He finished runner up for the sixth man of the year award dennis is a shifty guard who can run an offense while being able to play off ball as well with his three-point shooting he adds versatility to la's backcourt and can lessen the load on lebron james having to run the offense schroeder shot a career high 38 and percent from the three-point line last season danny green shot 36.7 percent from behind the arc during the regular season and that number dropped to 34 percent from three-point range in the playoffs Specifically, Schroeder thrived as a catch and shoot guy from behind the arc last year, shooting 41% in those situations last season. He should get many open looks as a spot up guy playing with James. Also, Dennis is a foundational piece for LA that can grow with AD, something the Lakers didn't have last year. JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, of course, deserve all the credit in the world for their contributions to last year's title winning roster, but with all due respect to those veteran centers, Marc Gasol is an upgrade at the position. LA locked up the free agent seven foot Spaniard to a two year contract where Gasol will follow in his brother Powell's footsteps and rock the purple and gold. Gasol may not have the same kind of athleticism or weak side rotations that McGee and Howard provided, however, he's one of the best interior defenders in the game. Gasol's also one of the better passing bigs in the game. He's averaging 3.4 assists for his career, including 3.3 with the Raptors last season. Mark has a tremendously high basketball IQ, which should fit quite nicely with James and Davis. Gasol's ability to make the right play for others and provide shooting is going to be crucial for Los Angeles. 
Don't forget about the bargain addition of Wesley Matthews, who brings a stellar 3 and D presence to the roster to help replace Green. Wesley Matthews shot 36.4% from three-point range in the regular season, which is actually 0.3% worse than what Danny Green shot last year. However, the one area where Matthews shot way better than Green was from the corners. According to NBA.com, Matthews converted 35 of the 83 corner three-pointers he attempted last season. That's a 42.3% clip. Comparatively, Green made 55 of the 138 three-pointers he attempted, a 39.8% clip. However, there's still a certain continuity for the Lakers, given they brought back two rotation players in free agency in Contavious Caldwell-Pope and Markeith Morris. Of course, the GOAT Alex Caruso and Kyle Kuzma are back as well, but more importantly, James and Davis should be that much better in the second year of their partnership. Before showing you my concerns and then predicting the Lakers 2021 success, reason four for the Lakers potentially being better than last year is the fresh group that's now surrounding the King and the Brow. Last year, the offense had to develop from either LeBron or Davis. Those were your only two answers. But this offseason, the Lakers acquired two elite scoring threats who aren't specialists like Howard or Green, but are top-notch NBA talents. Dennis Schroeder and Montrez Harrell are exactly those type of elite players. Additionally, with a center like Gasol, who proved in Toronto that he can thrive in a championship system, plus a playoff experience three-point marksman in Wes Matthews, LeBron and Anthony have been given new life around them. That's absolutely perfect for the Lakers because when they start training camp in just over a week, they'll have had less than two months since their title run, so you can expect the new core of Lakers to play a ton of minutes given the rest of the roster just went through a grueling playoff run a few weeks ago. But before my full official predictions, quickly, here are my concerns for the Lakers. Firstly, Marc Gasol mightily struggled in the second round these past playoffs against the Boston Celtics. Mark took over two threes per game in the Raptors' seven-game series loss to the Celtics and made just 7% of those threes, so will he be the 38.5% 2018-19 regular season three-point shooter in LA, or will he continue to have the type of brutal cold streaks like he had with Toronto in 2020? Then there's Wesley Matthews' shooting inconsistency. Outside of the restricted area, Matthews made just 29.7% of the shots that he took which is considerably worse than what Danny Green shot, which is 48.6%. If you thought Green was limited offensively, Laker fans, wait until you see Matthews. The good news is that the Lakers don't need Wesley to be a go-to guy on offense, obviously. That's especially true now that they have Dennis Schroeder in the backcourt. Another question I have is, will Kyle Kuzma bounce back in his fourth season after struggling all of this past year? If LA is going to be even better than they were in 2020, which they may have to be considering the likely tougher competition they're sure to face, then Kuzma is going to have to be the rookie version of himself and really produce and be a consistent stretch big. Now for my way too early predictions for the Lake Show's 2021 success. One of the few flaws for the LA roster last year was their lack of scoring off the bench. King James would take a rest and the Lakers' offensive efficiency numbers would plummet. LA was constantly in a state of survival without their best player on the court at all times. Rob Palenka solved that issue in the very first week of the offseason by signing the sixth man of the year and trading for the runner-up for the sixth man of the year trophy. Matthews is a similar 3 and D role player, albeit not as accomplished defensively as Green and a less accurate three-point shooter historically, but Marc Gasol is as accomplished as it gets. At 35, Big Spain's an NBA champion, a three-time All-Star, a former All-NBA first-team player, while having won Defensive Player of the Year in 2013. With a valuable guard defender and slasher on the other end in Alex Caruso still on the team, the 2021 Laker depth chart is looking really impressive with all their new acquisitions, and of course with the support Davis and James now have, assuming no one gets hurt, I'm predicting the Lakers secure the number one seed in the Western Conference next year, but their playoff journey is going to be tough, as in the Western Conference, even without Clay, the Steph Curry, Kelly Oubre, Andrew Wiggins-led Warriors should provide a challenge. Houston just signed a talented up-and-coming power forward in Christian Wood next to the Brody and the Beard. 
The young Murray Jokic led Nuggets are only getting better. Plus, Kyrie and KD are healthy and back together. So, while LA is going to be much better than before, and it's scary for the rest of the league, with a completely new supporting cast, they'll have to build up a championship chemistry from square one because the competition is going to be legit. But the bottom line is, if you can't hurt LA when James is subbed out, when can you hurt them? Two shoutouts next video, but let me know how good you think the Lakers will be and why in the comments section. Let's be friends and stay updated on the channel and the NBA by following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. You'll see informatively lit posts and reposts like these. Get to know more about the man behind the microphone. That's at dflowhoops on both platforms. Much appreciated. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. This was dflow, and I'll see you next video.